Good morning. 
How is everybody? Saturday, February 12th, at least here in this part of the world. Man, I'm, I'm, I've been, you know, eyeing the chat while the music was going and it's, I'm seeing all these people that uh, are happy and surprised to finally make a, a live live stream. So maybe I should start A, starting at 9.30 a.m. my time, so 15 minutes later, let me know in the chat if I, if that would be cool. B, if I don't uh, schedule it the day before and I just schedule it like 30 minutes before I go on or something because I, f I feel, or maybe I should just put Joe Bonamassa in the thumbnail so you guys click on it. By the way, Josh Smith and Joe Bonamassa will not be in today's Saturday morning coffee chat Q&A. I just, that was a picture I took this week and we'll talk about that. A lot of stuff to talk about this week, but uh, I wanted to say hi to some people that I haven't seen here before. Um, man, the chat just went by really, really quick. Somebody, oh, Julien Goujon, 4.30 4, 4 p.m. in Paris. Um, good afternoon, then. Good evening. Also, uh, Mr... Wrong cup, it's 9 p.m. Tuned in from Shillong, India. I think you might be our first uh, person. <laughs> to tune in from India. So welcome. We got uh, Ron Van Hees here from Belgium. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'll, pr I'll try it. Guy Morgan. I know I butchered that, but you know what? Scott Sanders was here early. Kevin Kazmai, Matt Dillahunt, Rod Woodruff. Yeah, it was a teaser of a thumbnail. Uh, Matt Galbraith. Scott, uh, Og Ogie. Keith H. Paul Leonard U Ewing is here. You're not late. Ben and Matt are here. The mods to the stars. BC Rich is going to drag brunch tomorrow morning. My wife was in Vegas uh, a couple weekends ago and went to a a couple drag brunches. I think she's she went to the RuPaul show or something. Uh, I got some cool stuff to show you. Not my coffee, but. Our friend uh, Zach from Mythos Pedals and Mass Street Music just released this yesterday, which I'll tell you all about it and why I love this pedal. Silicon Fuzz. Mass Street exclusive. Who else is here? Guitar Man. Rax Effects. I'm just... Bold Strike is in Portugal. Oh, man. We got the whole globe here today. We got Bologna, we got Italy, we got Richmond, Virginia, Dave H. I, my sister should be here, she's in Richmond too. Man, Canada, Finland, Portugal. Hi from an ice rink in Reston, Virginia, Cesar. Guitar Man 45, good old Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. I hear Detroit's in the uh, Super Bowl. I think uh, some one of my friends sent me a, a picture of someone selling Detroit Rams t-shirts, which I thought was funny. I'm not a big football fan, but you know I'll, I'll watch a little bit tomorrow. And for those of you not in the States, uh, tomorrow is the Super Bowl, which is a, uh, a, a big excuse to eat hot wings and nachos. It's like a, an American uh, alternative Thanksgiving. Teresa's here. Kabayan from Illinois. Jot Jot. Kumusta? Emery. Ten solo music. Go Bengals. I don't know. How many people are going to be watching the Super Bowl for the sport or for the halftime show? I think... 
This is the first halftime show uh, that I'm mildly excited about. I don't. I couldn't even tell you who played last last year's halftime show or the year before that, or the year before that. Um. Yeah, I think I stopped watching after Coldplay played the Super Bowl. Um, halftime show. It's it's in L.A. Right, so they got all the. Um, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Eminem, somebody else. But, uh, you know, that being in L.A. and that should be really hyped up. Prince is still the best halftime show ever. Yeah, I agree. Ben Coombs will be doing the li his live show tomorrow during the Super Bowl, so... You know, if you're not into football, if you're more into guitar stuff than football, like me, I'll see you on Ben Coombs' uh, live stream. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, Teresa, my my niece who's 14 is is probably more interested in that, and is probably like, who's who's Mary J. Blige? <laughs> Red Zeppelin, didn't the... Here, I got a highlight here. Comment. Didn't the Bengals have the hit song, Walk Like an Egyptian? I actually started following Susanna Hoffs on Twitter. And I feel like every Monday she posts a video of her singing Manic Monday on acoustic guitar. Like, without fail, every week. So I, I, I follow her for just that fact alone. Uh, so... So many things to talk about. I don't know if you've noticed the background, but I got a new amp. That is a new Vox AC4. I don't know if I was talking about, maybe I was talking about this last weekend, about wanting to get more low wattage amps. And four watts is extremely low, but I'll tell you that's a pretty loud amp for a four watt amp. I think a one watt amp would be loud for me. To tell you the truth. But that's 4 watts. Uh, I haven't really demoed it much yet, but... Vox, yes, hand-wired Matt Wilkes. AC4HW1. I got it new from... Groons. I haven't been... To, Groons Guitars is uh, one of the popular guitar stores here in Nashville. And I hadn't, I hadn't been there probably in two or three years. So um, it was nice to stop by and see what they had. They had... Um, a really nice Tyler HSS Strat there, which I played a little bit. And they had um, an 86 Made in Japan Fender Strat, just like my first one. This one was sunburst with a rosewood fretboard, but it had the original Series 1 awful tremolo. Um, and it was still awful. But uh, just fixed up a 3-watt magnetone, Cesar Pico. I think, is that the new one? No. They just came out, or they're coming out with the Starlight. We talked about that last week. Um, I think 15 watts, maybe? It might be 5 watts. I can't remember. But uh, another thing that I bought at Groons, and if you don't follow me on Instagram... You should, because then you'd be seeing everything that I'm talking about. But, uh, I got one of these. That's not a Zoom. No. I didn't get that pedal. Yeah. Oh, that's a very low. I got a, a one of these blue chip picks. And if you don't know about blue chip, this is a very popular pick here in Nashville uh, amongst... Bluegrass players, but also electric players. This is a $35 pick. And by God, I better not lose this pick. Actually, I ordered another one online just so I had a backup. Because this is a, this is actually a nice pick. Is it worth the $35? Um, I haven't decided yet. But there is something special about the pick. Not only... It's the material or something. There's something about this material, and I do like this shape. This is a fairly big shape, but I'm, I'm 
liking bigger picks now. You know, I, I stopped using like Jazz 3 little picks a long time ago and kind of been leaning towards more triangular shapes. But $35, this is the TP60, if anyone wants to know. 60 meaning, uh, it's not millimeters, obviously, but it's 61 thousandths or something, is that is how they measure it. Basically, I think this is a 1.5 millimeter pick. The bevels, yeah. I think it's something about the, the bevels on this one. It's very comfortable. Is there an NFT that comes with a $35 pick? No, but they do take uh, Ethereum. Is that, is that a, uh, a Bitcoin thing? Any uh, Bitcoin investors out there? I know nothing about Bitcoin. Do they make them in a Jazz 3 size? Actually, Jazz Flounder, Blue Chip does make a Jazz, pick, uh, jazz shape series. So I'm assuming there's a Jazz 3 size. I think I saw a Jazz 3 size. Um, Arthur Gonzalez owns a lot of Doggy Coin or Doggy Coin, Doge Coin. I, you know, I signed up for Coinbase because my barber uh, keeps on telling me to to start investing and in, in using, you know, I think Coinbase was the app he told me about, but I haven't done anything yet. Uh, S okay, Kelly B apparently knows more about, I don't know anything about blue chips. I'm new to the, the game. But Kelly B is saying STP40 is close to the Jazz 3. Sharp. Sharp tip pointy. That's what I think STP stands for. Sharp tip pointy. Uh, okay, so... Let's talk about jo Joe Bonamassa. So if you haven't... Uh, well, followed my Instagram or seen the thumbnail, I got to briefly hang out with Josh Smith and Joe Bonamassa at the, their rehearsal this week. Um, I was basically, I had to drop something off to Josh and I ran into Joe and we started talking and um, he invited me into the rehearsal room and, and, and showed me his rig. The, if you've seen the picture, I don't think I have, do I have the picture here. Here. So this is a photo I snapped. Uh, you can see this, the rig in the background. It sounds amazing. It sounds ridiculous. Um, hold on. So I, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have video of him playing it. I didn't want to play through it. I was just in awe of the sound and checking out all the gear and, and stuff. And watching him play, obviously. But, um, essentially he's got his Marshall Jubilees. And then he pairs them, pairs it with different types of amps. Whether it's uh, his the Fender High Powered Twins. Some Dumbles. He's also got a Leslie. Um, and another Dumble. And it all sounds amazing. And when when I heard him play... He didn't have any pedals on, it was just the amp saturation, and it sounded ridiculous. He has a pedal board, but, you know, the sound alone, guitar direct to his amps, my god. If you um, follow Guthrie Trap on Instagram, Guthrie was there also this week, and he got to play through the rig, which I'm a little bit jealous of, but... Um, yeah, it's it was loud. Angus Clark is here. Three killer players, man. Thank you. Um, so no video, no vlog from that day. But last night, so if you don't know, Josh Smith, who's a really fine guitarist, artist in his own right. You know, he's got I don't know how many albums out, but ever since he was probably like fourteen. Um, 
He's actually uh, Joe's rhythm guitar player this year. Well, last year too, but this year for this tour. So, um, and he gets a couple solos too, but um, jo Josh played last night. He did a little gig here in Nashville at a little bar called The Underdog, which is slowly becoming a very popular, and maybe some of you that are in the chat were there last night, because I, I know I met a bunch of you last, well, there goes my chat window. My iPad. A bunch of you were uh, there last night and said hello. So hi, good morning, I made it. I didn't think I was gonna do a live stream this morning, but uh, I did. And um, so Josh did his gig last night. I have a couple of videos from that. Uh, but everyone was out, you know, Joe Morgan from Morgan Amps, a um, bunch of my guitar player friends in town were there, packed. Packed house. Um, let me see if I can find a video. Here is a video. Hopefully it won't be too loud. I just took a short video because I didn't want to have my camera up the whole time. But, at the very end, guess who showed up? You would have never guessed. Horrible cameraman. Yes, Joe Bonamassa showed up. Well, he, he had been there the whole time. But. Brought his 59 and a dumble and, and sat in on a song. Thank you, Arthur. Emery, uh, that is the underdog. It's in East Nashville. Yeah, it was pretty packed and I, I had to stand on a... We, we were standing in the back, uh, but kind of by the door, just to get some fresh air, but... Um, it was packed, and I had to stand on a chair to, to get that shot. Uh, Arthur, where are you? Thanks again. Super Chat, if you're new here, we do Super Chats if you want me to answer your question or see your comment. Uh, it goes direct, directly to the Taco Fund, which helps me eat lunch today. Thank you, Arthur. A lot of people consider Dumble to be the holy grail of amps and tone. What do you think is the holy grail of amps? Personally, for me, well, I understand why people think dumbbells are the holy grail, ma mainly because, you know, they're a very personal amp to Alexander Dumble, and there's not a lot of them out there, and they have a very unique sound um, that's different than your Fenders, Voxes, and Marshalls. For me, the holy grail, well... Yeah, I guess it would have to be an extremely rare amp. I don't know. I wouldn't know because I haven't found it yet. Holy grail of amps. You know, I've always wanted a 59 Tweed Baseman, but I mean, I wouldn't say it's extremely rare to find one, nor is it overly expensive like a Dumble. But for me, that's kind of like... The one amp that I would love to get in here, and it's a 50 watt amp, it's, it's loud, you know, I would never be able to crank it up at most places. But, um, yeah, that, that's one amp that I've always wanted 
Ever since like college, probably. I have a, a, a blackface baseman head that's actually at Brett Papa's house right now. But um, that was like, that's been kind of my, the amp that I compare all amps that I have to, you know? Pat Burgesson had that basement. <laughs> Holy Grail amp is the Roland Microcube, the battery powered one. Millstap is here, y'all. This is probably the reason why, he's probably the reason why I want the Tweed Basement because you have like a couple of them. If you guys don't subscribe to Millstap, he probably does my favorite Hendrix lesson videos and Hendrix tone videos. <laughs> so if you're here on my channel because of a Hendrix video that I did, then you need to thank Millstap because, you know, he, He's been doing it longer than I have, and he's one of my favorites. Um, so make sure you subscribe to Mr. Millstap. We're both uh, hardcore Hendrix heads, I guess. There you go. Fish bulb. Make sure you're subscribed to Millstap. So that was last night. That was this week. There's so many... Uh, I have so many friends in town this week. Uh, I have a couple, I have a friend from college that I haven't seen probably since the 90s that was in town last night, so I got to see him and another friend from college. Uh, I have some bunch of friends from LA were in town this week. Um, so yeah, busy, busy week, man. Um, but on to... Let's talk about Zach's pedal because, okay, I went to drop off um, the new Sus Mario Sip um, pedal. Well, he Zach gave me the um, the uh, prototype Sus Mario Sip that we're gonna tweak a little bit and hopefully release later this year. But when I was there, I saw this on his desk and I said, "What's that?" And he's like, "Oh, this is the new uh, Mastery." Uh, exclusive fuzz that we're doing that we're releasing on Friday. So I guess I was there Thursday and um, He said take it home and and uh, you don't have to shoot a video or anything But just tell me how you like it. So I took it home and I plugged it in which I rarely do I had some time on Thursday, but usually I wait a day and um, I played it for 10 minutes. I texted Zach and said How much do you want for this? I want to buy it and you know, I'm a fuzz, I'm a fuzz head. This is a, a silicon fuzz, basically like a fuzz face. And um, something about this, which I'm gonna show you, but uh, I liked it so much that I was like, I don't wanna give this back to you. How much, you know, I, I know you only have a couple of these made for uh, mastery, but I would like to procure one of these. And uh, so I PayPal'd them and it's mine now. Of course, I got the Murphy Labs. Now you might want to, you might be wondering why I'm not taking the Strat out for this. Well, this sounds great with both humbuckers and, and um, single coils, and there's a reason. So what my understanding is what Zach did with this was he kind of rolled off the bass and the woofiness of a, uh, a normal silicon fuzz, which, you know, was never a big problem for me. But once I heard this and I heard that, like, not only was the bass rolled off, but it almost sounded like the mids were a little more, more prominent which is kind of what you want, especially when, you, when you're playing in a live situation with a band. A lot of times, you know, fuzzes get lost in the mix, you know, with, you know, drums and bass and vocals and all that stuff. So this seems to be a more usable silicon fuzz to me. Um, 
Plus, it just it sounds good in every uh, position, you know. And I'm not even dimed on the fuzz because this is a trick that I learned uh, from James Santiago, particularly with silicon fuzzes. Is you don't want to crank the fuzz necessarily unless you're looking for that sound. But there's a sweet spot. See how that that buzzing went away? It uh, there's a sweet spot like right under ten, where it just sounds like smooth, you know. When you roll it, roll down the volume, obviously you get some nice clean. Yeah, I've been digging it, and I, you know, I compared this to my other silicon fuzz, which is pretty much like a you know one-to-one -one version of a fuzz face. It's the Espresso FX silicon fuzz, and this you can definitely hear the bass more, which is kind of like the way it's normally. But uh, this rolls it off really nicely. This thirteen forty-seven. Um, here's how it sounds with the fuzz dimed. Come on, camera, pull focus for me. I don't know why it's not focusing. Oh. Okay, hold on. Let me, uh, there we go. Nice. LPD pedals. Rolling off the bass keeps it from getting fizzy in the top end. I know, totally counterintuitive, uh, counterintuitive, but it is what it is. The science is pretty interesting as to why. So when you roll off the bass, it keeps it from getting fizzy in the top end. Yeah. I don't know how that works. You need to explain that. I think, was he saying that there's like a little bit of glitter? Maybe not. Maybe it wasn't this one. In certain lights, you can see that there's like a... Might have been another pedal. I can't remember. There's like a, a shimmer to the finish. Yeah. Somebody was asking, is the Les Paul worth the money? Yes, I'm loving it. It's definitely worth the money. I play it every day. It's the only guitar that I keep in the case. I don't keep it on a stand. That might change once I get used to it, but uh, I case it up. That's it dimed. And 
that's with the tone rolled down. And I do have uh, the um, King Tone Switch uh, bypassed. <laughs> If I was using the the tone the t treble bleed, it wouldn't clean up as good. So so that's a situation where you want it bypassed, uh, where you don't want to use a treble bleed, uh, particularly with fuzzes when you're rolling down, it cleans up a lot better. my volume pot. fuzz halfway down it still has character to it you know a lot of times these old fuzz face circuits only sound good with the fuzz you know either dimed or somewhere here but even you know I mean it sounds like a really good overdrive pedal now can I do a Foxy Lady intro? I don't have uh, speakers on, so I can't get feedback. Samalis. Thank you. Thank you for your taco fund for D carnitas. Okay. Vegan carnitas today. So what do you guys think sounds better? Uh, um, Strat with the fuzz or Les Paul with the fuzz? Let me know, because I'm always curious to hear. Because I know, for me, oh, fuzz face, I'm going to reach for my Strat. But, um, you know, humbuckers react a little bit differently. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And both guitars work great with this one. <laughs> You know what? I think I need to check my calendar real quick. Okay, it's not for two weeks. I will be doing another live stream uh, on Together in a couple weekends. Not next Sunday, but this following Sunday. So make sure you're, uh, you check that site out. I forget who's streaming this weekend. I want to say it's... I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Maybe Dave Grissom today? <laughs> Okay, something else that I got this week that I purchased from Reverb used. I don't know if y'all know about this pedal, but my friend, producer friend, Kevin, hipped me to this company. 
This is a, an Acklem Windmiller preamp, which is based on a, a weird, obscure, kind of obscure reverb unit that Pete Townsend apparently used uh, as a preamp or a boost. Bold Strike, I don't have an octave pedal uh, hooked up right now, unfortunately. Brett Papa has my octave pedal. Mark Cologne, thank you. So today, we've got Dave Grissom and Oddly Freed streaming on Together. So after this, if, you get, if you're not doing anything and want to see some really great guitar playing as well as chat with them in person, uh, sign up for Together. I think there's some deals where you get like the first month free, so you might as well check it out because it's, you know, you're not paying for anything and you can talk to them in person, on camera. Um, let's see here. Okay, no one's heard of this, or no one's seen this, or no one has this. Let's check it out together, because um, it's interesting. It's one of these uh, pedals that I think can sort of transform any amp into almost like a JTM 45 sound. Uh, and I want to test this out with like a solid state amp, like put this through a solid state to see if this actually makes it sound more tuby. Okay, let's turn off a bunch of stuff here. Okay, here is my ultra clean or Fairly ultra clean amp. <laughs> kind of hard to tell with the mic off. On. I'll turn it off real quick. So the way that I have this set, it's, it, these knobs are weird. So we have a low cut, it's basically a, a gain knob and a low cut and a high cut. The, the more you turn up the knob, basically the more it cuts. So I have it cutting the lows, you know, pretty aggressively. Um, and then a the high cut, I just have it straight down the middle. And to me, this sounds like it's tightening up everything as well as um, I'm cutting the bass a little bit and adding a little bit of shimmer, I guess. Cause let's compare. And you know, my, the gain is like not even up all the way. So I'm barely pushing the front end, which I think is kind of where it's really sings, you know? Albert Bouchard has the Dr. John pedal um, that I haven't checked out. I know they make another one that's kind of like a, a, a Beatles, Beatles Evox pedal or something, which is also interesting to me. I mean, here's the gain dimed. Turn off my mic. So to me, with that gain all the way up like that, it's not even all the way up. It kind of just loses, it just starts kind of flubbing out, which maybe that's, you know, the nature of it. But to me, I think the sweet spot for this is 
you know, nine to 12 o'clock, just to put a little hair on the front end of the amp. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, it does, uh, as written, Ritter, it does kind of have a voxy uh, thing to it. Probably the way that I have the cut knobs uh, adjusted. I mean, let's play around with them for a little bit. So that's everything at noon. So that is the most bass. So right there, you can tell that these knobs aren't wildly, you know, the sweep isn't huge, which means that there's sweet spots even all the way down and all the way up. So it doesn't sound harsh. It doesn't sound too dark, um, which is nice. I like that in a pedal. Yeah, even with the high cut, it's like, this is sort of more present. And then this is kind of barely the highs I rolled off. That actually sounds, you know, I think I had it like this before. I might actually do something like that now. That might be the, that might be the jam. Let's see. I'm going to say my setting would be like that. 45 degree angle on the high cut. I don't know. Something to think about. Something to check out. It does, AJ Stone thinks it does have a Townsend sound to it. S. Ritter wants to hear a strat through it. Let's hear a strat through it. Turn this off. Mind you, I'm going through a, a, a very clean, <clears throat> clean channel. 
If I had a little bit of hair on the amp, it would sound different too. You can definitely hear the, the, the cut uh, doing its work more with the single coils for sure. Uh, this Birdman BL, this is the Windmiller preamp from Aclam, Aclam. Um, it's supposed to sound like a, a the preamp of a reverb unit that Pete Townsend was using back in the day to boost his, his amps, I guess. I bought this because when I was at my friend's studio and we would turn this on, it just sounded like the greatest power chord sound you could ever get. Yeah, and exactly, Christopher Vincent, you said it. Um, it's kind of a cross between a Vox and a Marshall to me. It's got a little hint of that top, uh, top boost chime from a Vox, but then there's this crunch of like a JTM 45 that I really like. And you know that if you've ever, you know, if you've ever been lucky enough to plug in through a JTM 45 and a Vox at the same time and combine them, that's a great, that's like the British tone. And that's something I want to start doing now is, you know, after seeing uh, Joe's and Josh's rigs where it's a combination of two amps, you know, Josh has two Morgans on the road. He's got his J, a new JS 40 goat, which is kind of his signature Morgan amp uh, that Joe Morgan had built into a super reverb chassis four tens. And then he's got another, it's like a Vox, uh, it looks like an AC30, it might be an AC20, but that's his rig. And then, you know, Joe's is his Marshall with a Dumble or a Fender Tweed Twin and just those combinations together. There's something special about it. There was a time where I was plugging in through two different amps. This was back in high school, actually. And... Um, I might as well do it here. I just got to figure out how I'm going to hook hook everything up because I'm going direct and using cap, uh, you know, IRs and all that stuff. But uh, I would have to get another two notes. Actually, I do have an unused two notes I could use. And then somehow wire my signal to two. I need a splitter or something. Anyone can, can recommend a... A radial thing or something that I can use to basically send to two amps. I feel like I have a device that does that. But I want one that's not going to give me any phasing problems or noise issues or whatever. So if there's something out there, I'm sure there's a Radial Labs box or pedal that, uh, that people use for that. Um, I think back in the day I was just using like a Morley ABY box, but... I think that kind of does something to the tone or introduces some noise or something. Radial ABY, just a regular ABY. West Chilton Alele. Lele, that's the uh, that's the pricey one. That's what Joe uses on his board. He's got a the blue Lele. <laughs> Jeremy Ross, thank you. Radial has a, a transformer and Phase flip. Is that the rate? Is that the big shot, man? You know, okay. I have, <laughs> I actually have one that I use um, at my studio desk to to switch between um, my Helix and going into my uh, right into the UAD Apollo. So I actually do have one that I could either bring out here or maybe I'll just get another one, but. Yeah, I totally forgot I have that. And it does have all those, the different switches to 
we're phasing and all that stuff. <laughs> Christopher Vincent, it sounds like the Monoprice Stage Right 15 watt amp. Monoprice Stage Right 15 watt, what is that? Monoprice. I read that and I'm like, uh, I saw Fisher Price. I'm like, is that a toy amp? Stage Right <clears throat> 15 watt. Wow, okay. I might have to get this. 279. That's not uh expensive for what it is. 15 watt. Who has a mono price amp? I can get it on Amazon. Man, I never knew about this. Well, thank you for letting me know about that. Okay, thank you, Christopher. So it's Harley Benton's branded 15 watt. Interesting. I've never seen it on uh, YouTube videos, but... Ryan demoed them. Okay, Matt. Um, yeah, like I said, the AC4, I'm getting into small wattage amps. Definitely needs a speaker swap. I think most amps in that price range would need a, a speaker. I, I might chance swap out the speaker on the, the Vox. I think that actually has a green back. Uh, I've heard of people swapping it out to something else. Bruce Wilkie. Wilk. Wilk Wilkie. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, can you show a must-know blues lick? Uh, let's see. That? Nah. You don't need to know that one. Let's see. I don't know. What's a, uh, There's so many licks that I use. Okay. This one... If you're a pentatonic player and you want to put some cool spice into your dominant seven stuff. So we're in, let's say we're in A. Forget about the pentatonic skill. Just play that lick. So this is um, basically kind of coming off of major pentatonic but I'm playing it in first position, right? So, we're in A, we've got E, F sharp, A, and then this dyad, ooh, music school word, which is the, uh, the top two strings of a, a triad. So we've got the C sharp and an E. So we've got fifth, Major six, root, third and fifth. So from, you do something like that. Something like that, I don't know. But, you know, that kind of takes you off of like, it gives you a little bit of a major tonality. Even that starting note, instead of your minor pentatonic, change it to this. Just changing this note, the flat seven, to a six. can just change the whole vibe of, of your, your soloing, so. 
Try that. Essentially just, instead of playing a flat seven, in, in our case, if we're an A, instead of playing a G note, play an F sharp note. That's fun. Here's another pedal. This is a kind of a, a new tube screamer thing. I can't show it to you right now because I have a video coming out on it, but. All right, let's uh, go a couple more minutes. Uh, answer some questions. If you have any questions, you know what? I lost my iPad. Can I access it? Let's see. No. It's way back there. I'm not going to try to get. So, I'll try to see all of your comments. Ted Nagurski. You know what? No. Before you, Jeremy. What? Why do you think the martial origin gets no love? I think a lot of people don't know about the origin stuff. Uh, I almost bought one when I was looking at low water jamps. I, I'm still looking at them, but I don't know. There's a lot of stuff from companies, from big companies that kind of get lost because, you know, we're not aware of the entire lineup or, or things that get released. At least for me, because I, I don't keep tabs on the entire industry all the time. So like, I'll be surprised like, oh, this pedal came out like six months ago. Why didn't I hear about it? Thank you for your super chat. That was uh, Matt Wilkes. Thank you for the vegan taco fund. Uh, let's see here. Going back into the chat, which I cannot. All right, I missed all the, I missed my, Location. Christopher Vincent, would you go with a wah wah pedal or an equalizer if you didn't have either? I would definitely go with a wah pedal because it's it's more fun <laughs> than an EQ pedal for sure. I think an EQ pedal is is more for the function than actually, you know, um, making your tone better, I guess, or enjoying, it doesn't make you enjoy guitar. Well, a wah-wah pedal instantly makes you enjoy it. That being said, I have both, uh, and I probably use the wah pedal more, so if that means anything. Fishbub, how do I get gigs playing guitar when people only know me as a bass player in town. Stop playing bass. I mean, stop taking the bass gigs. I don't know. How do I get gigs playing guitar? Hmm. I guess it's just about putting yourself out there um, and saying, hey, I can do this gig on guitar if you need me or, you know, I'm open to doing that. Um, and the fact that if, you know, if you're a bass player in town and maybe you're doing gigs as a bass player, you already know people. So if you have that networking already in place, then um, just put it out there that you're, you're open to or you're wanting to do gigs at, on guitar. I've done, back in the day, I used to do gigs on bass. And, um, you know, I liked it at first, but, at, but then... Um, it was kind of hard because I was playing with my fingers and, you know, I didn't have the calluses just yet. So after a four hour gig, I was like, ah, my hands, I can't feel my hands. So, you know, but it was fun just to try to do gigs on bass and uh, think like a bass player. You can't think like a guitar player when you do bass gigs. You have to think like a bass player. And uh, that comes with, you know, rhythm and groove and locking in with the drummer. Uh, RJ, how many pedals do I have right now? 
um, for sale. I probably have like 50 that I'm going to put up for sale. So that leaves me with about a thousand. Now I got a lot of pedals. Um, Eric Salcedo, hello. The clear plexiglass shields in front of Joe's uh, amps are basically for the audience. You know, if they weren't on there and, you know, if the stage is yay high and people are sitting in their seats, they're basically head level with his amps, the people in the front row would probably get their heads blown off. So it's partly for them, it's partly for the sound people, so they have more control of the, ro the you know, the, the amount of sound going in the room um, and stage volume, you know. Back in the day when I was touring with Thompson Square and doing all these, you know, the country band touring, we would have to point our cabinets reverse or even put them behind the stage or under the stage because we wanted like almost no stage volume and no, we weren't using, you know, Kempers or Axe Effects. Some, some bands do when they're touring, but we, you know, me and the guitar player wanted to use our real amps. So we had to like, Hide the cabinets, basically. I got a super chat from Mike Wagliardo. Thank you, sir. Put a King Tone switch in my classic S this week. Congratulations. Very cool. Thanks for the heads up. Transformational. Man, it's fun. I, you know, I have it on, in here and it's, uh, it's, uh, I probably reach for it more than I use the volume knob just because there's some times where like if I have a lot of gain I want to switch it down to like you know the last position or the second to last position just for that thickness Scott Sanders thank you for your kindness vegan taco fun have a great weekend man I'm I'm either gonna have to take a nap or uh make some more coffee because I'm not a night person and uh you know we, we stayed out till <laughs> 11 maybe 12 and that you know that rarely happens these days I'm trying to think if I ever was I want to say yeah in my almost definitely in my my 20s and, and 30s I had to stay up late because I would gig until three or four in the morning sometimes um, and not get home till five or six. So, um, yeah, that's when I was a, a night owl for my job. Gosh, I do not miss that. I think I used to do gigs that wouldn't start till like 11 and we would be done by three or four, three thirty or four. I can't believe I did that. I try to go to bed by nine now. <laughs> no, I said 10. I would love to go to bed at nine, but it usually ends up being 10 or 11. Adrian Mar De Marti, yes, this is a cupcake knob. Um, and this comes from, wow, that, it's very bright. Um, because, one of my other favorite guitars, which I haven't seen, is the Bunting Willow. And this came with cupcake knobs, and I'm like, these feel good. Let's try it with the Windmiller, shall we? Oh yeah, that's Malcolm. Sick. Um... Ben Coombs remembers going on stage at 1 a.m. in Toronto clubs. Yes, but was it a four-hour gig? That's like, that's the problem. Is like, we would start at 11, 
A lot of times I would already be, I'd be already uh, three drinks in before the first set, first set even started. And then, you know, gig ends at 3.30, pack up, not leaving till 4, 4.30, get home by 5, oh, have breakfast and go to sleep. And then do it again the next day. So with this, I actually uh, raised the pickup heights a little bit because they were kind of sounding not as full as I wanted them. And I just literally like a millimeter, they went up. Um, and now they sound huge. Um, 90 minutes set starting at 1 a.m. Yeah. That's hard. I mean, that's a concert at 1 a.m. I'll tell you, one of the worst gigs I've ever done, I was playing with a, an, I guess you would call him EDM artist now, but back in the day, it was just, you know, electronica. Uh, it was a live drum and bass band. Great crew, fun times, but we did this one show where we played at a rave in San Francisco at the Cow Palace, if anyone's on the West Coast or Bay Area. I can't remember the name of it. This was in the early 2000s. And then we took a, I think it was a plane. I thought it was a helicopter, but we took a plane to either Portland or Seattle after. So this would have been at like 11 p.m. maybe. To, to, and then we drove like another hour in a bus to get to another rave to play there at like 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. And then right after that was done, we took a morning flight back to San Francisco. It was awful. Um, God, <laughs> that was tough. Um, it was fun because I was still in my 20s, but even then, like, I was so worn out just from, you know, the traveling to get to San Francisco from Florida, because I was living in uh, Miami at the time. And then just, you know, you show up that day, and then you sound check and whatever, and then you have to play that night in San Francisco, jump on a plane, go through the airport and jump on a plane, at like 11 p.m. midnight to play some crazy rave in the middle of nowhere in upstate in Washington or something. Play CU Duro. I don't know what that means, Ricardo Enrique. All right, guys, um, sorry this was a shorter live stream, but I went on a little bit late. Let me know if 9.30 a.m. Central Time is a, uh, is a better start time. Definitely works out for me, but I know we're all in different time zones, so hopefully I'll get more uh, West Coast people. If you have any uh, questions that I failed to answer or missed, I apologize, but you can leave them down in the, the comment section of this video when we're done here, and I'll answer them later today via texts. Matt Harrison works out for you. You should have come. Were you at the show last night? <laughs> Uh, Leland Berg's in West Coast. Stephen Fines. It's it's really just an extra fifteen minutes, but that can that, for me that helps because I can make a better coffee. West Coast Edge of Breakup. If you don't follow or if you don't subscribe to Edge of Breakup's channel, y'all should. Just saying. 
9.30 is cool. Jose Benito, 7.30 a.m. All right. Wow, there's more California people here today. That's awesome. A lot of times when I start 15 minutes earlier, <laughs> y'all miss it, I think. This is a good sound right here. Oh, here we go. This is a good question. Ah! It's going by so fast. Bruce is asking, how tough is it even to play gigs at all due to the saturation seed saturated scene in Nashville? Um, it's I'm not the person to ask because my situation of coming to Nashville and working was, is totally different than somebody else's. I had contacts in place and I had a gig, a touring gig before I even moved here. So, um, obviously that's different than someone that's thinking about moving to Nashville and trying to find gigs. Um, but that's, I've heard of many people that come, uh, to Nashville, know a couple people and then start working within that year. So it really is on in who you know. So th my biggest suggestion for people is try to know people in Nashville, which is probably easier now because there's so many people moving to Nashville, um, you know, from California and from other places. So it's almost like, I feel like everyone knows at least someone, a, a working musician that's in Nashville whether it's just, you know, through Instagram or, or, or chatting or whatever, but um, I don't have a foothold in the local gigging scene. So if you move here, I can't help you get gigs because I don't know the people, the right people. I mean, I know musicians that gig in town, but um, that's it. I'm not like the guy to ask to get people hooked up with the gigs. You know, double burner. Do I prefer miking my amp or going direct from the amp to the mixer? If you mic, which mic do you prefer? <clears throat> I, if in a perfect world, I would definitely mic cabinets, but since I, in my studio, I don't have an ISO room where I could really crank it up. So I have to use, um, you know, a speaker simulator. But live, you know, obviously I love miking the amp. Um, 57, SM57, you can't go wrong. Um, you just have to put it in the right place, but you know, you can play around with it. But really SM57 is all you need. <laughs> Wrong cup. Did I ever end up playing Rest in Peace by Extreme? Yeah. No. Not with this guitar. I can't remember the solo, but that's probably my favorite extreme solo, Nuno solo ever created. Wow, I missed a bunch of uh, chats. I was way behind, sorry guys. All right guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for hanging out with the chat. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Moderator to the Stars, Ben Coombs. <clears throat> he has a live stream Sunday nights during the Super Bowl tomorrow. So if you're not watching Rams, Bengals, or Dr. Dre and Eminem and Mary J. Blige, Snoop, go over to Ben Coombs' channel. Uh, what else, what else, what else? I got a bunch of new videos coming out this week. I think I'm releasing four which 
I didn't release any last week, I don't think. Oh no, I did one Eastwood video. I think I have four pedal videos coming this week, uh, and I can't show them off to you right now. Unfortunately, I don't think. But other than that, uh, what else? If you get a chance to see Joe Bonamassa this year, I would go just to hear the guitar amps. Um, unfortunately, uh, he's not, he doesn't have a date booked for Nashville at all. They just rehearse here and record here. But uh, I think he usually plays at the Ryman, but uh, not this year. I don't know, maybe it'll get added. But uh, enjoy your weekend, Super Bowl weekend, Valentine's on Monday. Don't forget to buy flowers for your special someone. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I will see you guys next week. But before I go, don't forget Josh Smith, Josh Smith, Josh Scott says you've been watching. Yeah, it's the his, CBD his... gummy of the YouTube guitar world. He's absolutely right. I've got a bunch of Delta 8 gummies that I'm going to take later. Joe Coy out. See you later.